Welcome to the Veterinary Marketing Podcast, where it's all about how to attract, engage, and retain clients to your veterinary hospital using digital marketing. In today's episode, I'm going to give you three tips on how to vet a service, product, agency, anything that is in vet med that you can use to either attract clients or market your practice. Because I was just having a client call today, and uh, it's, by the way, an in-between episode. And she was like, I don't know how I can vet these products or services. I don't know what to do. There's so many things out there that we can do. What should we do? So I'm going to give you some tips. It's going to be very helpful. It's going to be short and quick. So before we get into it, please, if you like this podcast, enjoy it and receive benefit from it, could you please be sure to share this with somebody that you think would benefit? It would mean the world to me. And it would be awesome to help other veterinary practices grow using digital marketing. All right, so let's jump into today's episode. I think there's a few criteria that you need to think about before you decide to work with any software product or tool or, you know, marketing guru, any, anything that you're trying to do. And I was actually listening to a podcast with another marketing company, and it just kind of got me thinking, you know, how, what are the criteria that you should use for vetting a product service or person that you're going to work with. And I think number one, the most important thing is that before they diagnose any type of product or service, that they actually take the time to understand what your goals are, what your problems are, and what you're facing. If somebody comes out and right out the gate, they're uh, saying you need this st- uh, tactic or strategy or tool, um, and so, I mean, sometimes there are things that can be universal. You do need to have, like, you need a practice management software, right? Definitely. But saying you need to do geofencing or you need to be doing, you know, this specific type of SEO, or it all depends on your bandwidth, your goals, what you have set up, what you're established at. And so if somebody's giving you blank recommendations for specific tactics, they're probably not somebody that you want to work with because they're most likely selling you something related to those tactics. So that should be, I think, a red flag. It doesn't mean you shouldn't work with them. Sometimes there's people who are bad salespeople. Maybe they make good recommendations in a bad way. But typically, I think you need to make sure that the person who's giving you understands the full picture because we all have limited time resources. And so it just is impossible. So beware of people that are just telling you to do tactics blindly without really getting an understanding of your goals. The second thing that I think is important to talk about is when you're going through a sales presentation or sales process with somebody, they are good at selling all of the benefits. They, you might not know what questions you need to ask. And so making sure that you have a full picture of here's like there's nothing is a perfect solution, right? There's always opportunity cost. And so you need to understand what the potential drawbacks are. So you know, depending on like, I'd say booking software is a perfect example. The salespeople make every solution that that you're looking at like a perfect solution. There's no problems. Everything's great. But you don't realize that it's not really a booking solution because it doesn't actually book in your practice management software. And you have to call to, it's just basically a, a glorified web form that's an appointment request. And you have to confirm it, right? So they don't tell you necessarily the drawbacks. So Number one, be sure that you're getting an understanding of the process and what you want the outcome to be, but just ask a lot of questions. And as much as possible, you want to be able to control your data. You want to be able to track your data and um, you need to understand what that flow and process looks like. So make sure that you have all of those things really understood. And I think the last thing that you should consider is when you're working with a product or service, they are salespeople. And so a lot of times too, I see this in marketing all the time. There's people that own marketing companies and they don't do any of the work. And so they're just basically regurgitating what they hear from the people that they speak to doing the work. And it's not to say that they can't understand it, but I was listening to a podcast today and they were saying that they can understand exactly how much market share is going on in each location. It's, you know, there's just things that that are not necessarily true. And if you're disconnected from doing the work, and it's not to say that you have people that, that do it for you, but if you don't have a good understanding of 
like the process and you're in it, a lot of times you're going to receive a sales pitch. It's like somebody that is selling a drug that, as, as a rep versus a doctor who's prescribing it and understands like medicine. And so um, the rep is selling all of the benefits. They don't necessarily know how everything works, but you know, the, the doctor is the one that's in there diagnosing, prescribing, right? If that makes sense in that analogy. So a lot of times people that are selling products or services are more like the rep and less like the practitioner who kind of understands holistically how things work. So as often as possible, try to work with companies that are, I'd say there's a, a good level. There's probably three different levels, right? You have small size businesses that maybe offer more boutique solutions. It's more hands-on. It's typically a little bit more expensive. Then you have medium-sized companies who they have a team and support, but everybody is still really relatively well-connected to all the processes and all of the moving pieces. And then you have larger-sized companies who are efficient at you know specific processes, and usually their prices are lower, but it's pretty disjointed from... You know, salespeople don't really have connection to the people that are implementing and things like that. So just uh, a word of, of warning. And just like in veterinary medicine, where there's corporate consolidation of everything, this also exists within the marketing companies and products and services around vet med. So if it's important to you to support small business, then be sure that that is part of your, your process as well, because this consolidation is happening in every single industry. And um, my, my commitment, by the way, is to not sell out to a VC or a large group. Um, I just love working with veterinary practices. I love providing information to everybody in the audience. And it's my goal to help you grow your veterinary practice. So just a quick note there. I really appreciate everybody so much in this audience. It truly means the world to me that you're listening and have a great day. I hope you uh, see you on the next episode.